Welcome to LeapFrog Works 3.1. In this video, we will give you a quick tour of the latest release features. LeapFrog Works 3.1 builds upon the integration and functionality improvements we've seen in the past few releases. Continued enhancements in performance, software interoperability, and overall usability are the focus of this release. In addition, LeapFrogWorks 3.1 introduces a new optional extension, the Contaminant Solution Kit, which helps you characterize land and groundwater contaminant plumes using geostatistical industry best practices. These contaminant plume models are dynamically linked with your geological models right inside your LeapFrog project. This release overview video won't delve into the contaminant extension features, as they will be covered in a separate, more comprehensive webinar. The features and functionality mentioned in this video are covered in more detail in the LeapFrog Works online training content and in the help. Let's take a look now at the new features in LeapFrog Works 3.1. We are committed to enhancing your user experience and expanding your modeling possibilities with every new release. Points in LeapFrog Works 3.1 have been upgraded to import significantly faster and take up less disk space while providing powerful new query filtering and calculated columns. While you won't see a significant change in the points object within LeapFrog, you will definitely notice the speed improvements when loading and manipulating point data, such as LiDAR topography clouds. Here's an example of importing a test point file object containing 7.2 million points with 18 numeric columns and one text column. With the previous version of LeapFrog, it would take about 48 minutes to import this file, but with Works 3.1, the file imports in just over four minutes. You're also now able to complete dynamic workflows entirely within Works that have previously relied on pre-processing outside of LeapFrog. Such workflows range from a simple unit conversion to being able to derive soil behavior type classification from combined CPT cone friction and pore pressure values. Another example would be averaging water level readings over a period to create seasonal min, max, and average levels for building water tables. We have also made some helpful improvements to our cross-section tool. Downhole depth markers can now be displayed on your cross-section layouts to help you communicate the depth of key horizons and other important features downhole. Flexible presentation options are available, including the ability to show labels perpendicular to the trace for inclined boreholes and the ability to adjust label location to avoid overlapping labels. We are working hard to continually improve your modeling efficiency. To help save you some valuable time, you can now batch import multiple images like a series of map tiles quickly and easily by simply dragging and dropping them into the GIS data maps and photos folder. Similarly, for cross-section images, such as your layouts of results from a GeoStudio analysis, you can simply drag and drop the images into the cross-sections and contours folder. If your images are already georeferenced, they will be imported using the associated geographic coordinates. If, however, your images aren't georeferenced yet, you will need to open each one under its respective folder and add the reference information in the usual way. Be aware that the images will batch import even if they don't contain georeferencing data, but if viewed in the scene, they will display outside your coordinate range at a 000 origin point until the georeferencing information is updated appropriately. For those of you using GeoStudio, Please note that the GeoStudio results exported in GeoTIFF format can be successfully dragged and dropped into LeapFrog using this method, if the section geometry was originally imported into GeoStudio from LeapFrog. Performance improvements have been made throughout LeapFrog Works to help save you more time. These improvements reduce processing time for numeric interpolants and mesh interpolants, as well as reducing the processing time for evaluating models onto cross-sections making you more productive than ever when maintaining geological and numeric models with dynamically linked cross-sections. Projects with alignment serial sections are especially improved due to a resolution issue with the land XML-based alignments that creates an order of magnitude improvement with no loss of change accuracy along the alignment. 
Also, provided you have sufficient hardware, you are now able to utilize additional processing cores. It's important to note, however, that you shouldn't enable more cores than your hardware supports, as this will actually slow down processing. As we recognize the importance of seamless software interoperability, we continue to develop new integration functionality. LeapfrogWorks 3.1 introduces a couple new ways for integrating newly supported data types and formats into a project. You will now be able to gain further insights into the ground conditions by incorporating 2D and 3D geophysical grids into your works projects. Geophysicists working in OASIS Montage can now publish their grids to the central data room. These grids can then be loaded directly into your works project from the central data room to enable easy workflows incorporating geophysical and geological data. UBC grid format has also been added to support 3D geophysical grids with variable block sizes from Foxy inversions. Additionally, LeapfrogWorks 3.1 supports import from and export to the Open Mining Format or OMF version 0.9. OMF was developed by the Global Mining Guidelines Group to allow for data exchange in an open standard format. If you do not have access to Central, you can use OMF to import geophysical grids from OASIS Montage and geologic surfaces from other software packages. LeapfrogWorks 3.1 also includes a couple changes to the numeric compositing functionality. Numeric compositing now allows you to select an additional weighting column such as density when compositing values from another table. You can now also specify a minimum coverage when handling residual end lengths during compositing expressed as a percentage of the interval length. This may result in the retention of residual intervals that were previously discarded when the numeric composite is in process. For those using Sequence Central, this latest release offers some great enhancements. We now have notifications. Actively collaborate on your projects using notifications. The new service alerts you to events and activities happening in your projects, allowing you to know when critical work has occurred. Notifications can be viewed in the central portal or delivered to your email. In the central portal, you can change your notification preferences. Choose the activities and mode of notification that you want, email or in-app, as well as the projects that you want to receive notifications about. We have also made improvements to the data room based on customer feedback. You can now move files and folders within a project to better organize your data. File folders can now be uploaded to the data room by drag and drop. These uploads are no longer limited by file size. Finally, each project now has a recycling bin, which enables a softer delete process. Files mistakenly removed can be restored by a user with owner permission. To make it easier to see new projects in your central server, the Central Projects tab in both LeapFrog and the Central Browser has a new Refresh button. There are a couple of new objects that can now also be published to Central, including interval midpoints and guide points. To facilitate the LeapFrog and Central upgrade process, Central now offers forward compatibility, meaning you'll now be able to use the latest version of LeapFrog prior to Central being upgraded. For more information about any of these new LeapfrogWorks features or the contaminant solution kit, please check out the following resources or contact your local sequence office.